today. An appeals court orders a judge to drop the charges against General Michael Flynn. And Bubba Wallace responds to the FBI clearing NASCAR of the presence of a noose. We've got a lot coming up, and it starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by Jason Buttrell, Chief Researcher of the Glenn Beck Program. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And also, thanks for semi-dressing up. This is about as I know, I'm like, wow, this really. is really <laughs> fancy for Jason, so thanks, whatever the Just throw a blazer over is. whatever, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Aaron Colon of TheBlaze.com, who actually does dress up I for try to. Always Somebody does. has to, right? <laughs> right. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, so let's get to Michael Flynn first, an appeals court has ordered uh, the judge in the Michael Flynn case to drop the charges against him. Uh, now, this has been such a weird twist of events in the last couple months, uh, the way that it's gone. Um, the, the DOJ ordered that, that, the, uh, that the, the charges be dropped. The judge said, well, hold on a second. We're not going to drop those charges just yet, which was unprecedented. And I mean, we talked to, if you guys watched the program, Josh Hammer was on the program. And Josh Hammer is like... Uh, as smart as it gets, okay, <laughs> and and also an attorney and knows these things. And he said this is completely unprecedented for a judge to do and say, well, hold on. It's almost like when you're getting married and they're like, well, if anyone disagrees with this union, <laughs> speak now or you're forever hold your peace. You're not supposed to stand up. <laughs> yeah. He's like, if anyone wants to stand up and give more information as to why this guy should stay in jail, you guys let us know. Uh, so, of course, an appeals court now has ordered that the judge drop the charges. Um, Jason, I know that you have been on this. You have been researching this way more than anyone else. So tell us what you know about it and what sticks out to you. So we're starting with just that portion of it, just the uh, yeah, but you dropping can segue, the case. Yeah, but segue into whatever you'd like. <laughs> well, first off, the thing with Michael Flynn has been such a, just a weird, I don't know, just evolution. Because they had, the, the way the media was portraying General Flynn was that, I, I want you to forget about the, you know, the decades of service where he rose all the way to the top and was head of the DIA. He's in cahoots with the Russians. Right. I don't know how you take that, that leap, but they were successful in doing this because the entire country was just convinced that Michael Flynn was some yeah. Russian you know, plant mm -hmm. or something. Uh, and it really all kind of went around the fact that he was, you know, he went and spoke at a, it was an RT uh, banquet or whatever in Moscow. And the Russians knew exactly what they were doing. They put him right at the same table with uh, Putin. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was Probably just, in hindsight, not a great decision for him to go do. Not a great look, yeah, for sure. Right. The optics of that, right. not great. But also not out of the realms of normalcy for right. former uh, U.S. politicians. They yeah. all do this, including Bill Clinton. He didn't do it with RT, but he did it with another Kremlin-sponsored and backed uh, organization. I think it was a bank or something. Mm -hmm. And he not, only, not only did Clinton get paid for it, this is the same year, mind you, that Flynn did it. But he got way more money. Like, if anything, Flynn got screwed just yeah. by not getting enough money that Bill Clinton did. And Clinton never got held to the same scrutiny. So Shocking. Uh, shocking, yeah. <laughs> um, but just saying that, you know, the, the whole narrative on him was crafted uh, right from the beginning. Um, the calls that he had to Kislyak was their ace in the hole. This was their, oh, see, we told you. But now we've known it's gone through multiple, multiple, uh, you know, um, uh, I guess, releases mm -hmm. that there was nothing wrong with what he said. Not only that, but the FBI, and this is why the case was, was gotten, got throughout, but the FBI was manipulating information, right? I mean, literally, that's literal. They were doctoring emails to make it look worse than it actually was. I mean, absolutely nuts what they did to him. I cannot believe, I don't understand why he was actually still in court. And that's what was so impressive that this judge would not throw it out. It was so obvious. And the judge works for, you know, for them. He, he's, he's not there to say, whoa, 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 no, I'm gonna do my own thing. Okay. Drop the case, it should have been done. But he went to this outside group who were these liberal activists is what they were. They were liberal activists. And they're the ones that were advising this judge. Just absolutely insane. And I don't even know. What, so do we segue now into? Yeah, we, well, we can. And so let me just add that uh, the DOJ did conclude that the interview that took place with Michael Flynn, when they set, basically set him up to lie, uh, they said that that whole interview was, quote, conducted without any legitimate investigative basis. Yeah, and then, and sorry, Aaron, uh, the, the, that, that lie, again, was another crafty way of obfuscation. 
Right. Um, there was no lie. And now we've all read the transcripts for the call. We've read them. Yeah. They said that he, I, you know, that he denied or that he uh, was working with the Russians to get the sanctions done, which is not even what he did, what he said. You, right. you can read it. He, he didn't say that at all. He was more worried about a ca their, their counter-terror uh, relationship going forward. But he never said, drop these sanctions. He was saying, hey, just make sure that, th I think he said it's reciprocal. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're, you know, when you come back at us for the sanctions, that it's reciprocal, it doesn't go too far, so that our relationship is tainted. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then when the FBI asked him about that, they said, did you tell him to drop sanctions? And he goes, I didn't tell them to do anything. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. It was more along the lines of, you know, you know, how we're going to, pro to, to progress in our relationship. That was the lie. Right. Yeah. Aaron, what are your thoughts before we, well, before we get into the uh, more details the good to stuff. come? Uh, when you think about this idea, we're talking about police authority and, and the abuse of authority that's happening on the local right. police level. And when you look at this, this is like a larger scale aspect oh, of absolutely. how authorities can yeah. abuse their power to entrap people, to trip them up, to get them into legal issues, even if they haven't really done anything wrong. And when you frame it in that way, you think about how upset we are with what happens at sheriff's departments and local police departments, and we're talking about abolished police for these abuses of power. Mm -hmm. Well, when it happens on this level, it has so much more of an impact, and I think there should be more focus on that and who else could that happen to you know because it's political people frame it as right versus left and they take their sides on that but if you're interested in justice and fairness in terms of our our law enforcement systems and the fbi and how they do their jobs this is a really big deal mm -hmm. amen all right so jason the plot thickens <laughs> so now we've we've had even more disclosures we had the uh the handwritten notes from peter struck uh those have finally come out and it's got some interesting stuff on there um so these notes. Well, first of all, can I point out the first interesting fact is that he has horrible handwriting. The worst. Because <laughs> you can barely read or make out anything on there, but apparently Jason can decipher it. My doctor writes better than that, <laughs> yeah. actually, I think. It's That's really insane. Bad. Um, so these are handwritten notes from a January 5th uh, meeting inside the White House. January 5th, 2017. 2017. 2017. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. This was just before the inauguration. The inauguration. Yeah. So. The, so in this meeting, so I just wanted just to put the timeline in perspective. January 5th, uh, when they're having this meeting, is the day after, you know, obviously January 4th, but is the day after on January 4th when the FBI, the head of the investigation, said, look, we are absolving Michael Flynn from this. We've looked into him. There's nothing there. Everything he said with Kislyak, there's nothing there. In fact, we're just removing Flynn from the overall Crossfire Hurricane, which is the Russia investigation. We're removing him from it. Okay, so the FBI is saying, we're done. There's, yeah, there's, there's no there there. There's no there there. Mm -hmm. That puts into context these handwritten notes in, in, this, in this meeting. So the FBI has closed it, right? One of the, you cannot read this, but I think it's almost the second to, down to the bottom. There's a little D, uh, and I think that's for Director Comey. It is, yeah. So on that, he's saying the Flynn and Kislyak calls are legit. They're legit. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I hate to give Comey any credit here at all. I don't know, even if there was something else he was saying. Maybe he was just throwing that out there, like, hey, maybe we can do this, but those, you know, realize those calls were legit, don't you? But he's saying there's no there there. Mm -hmm. Regardless of that, the president, President Obama himself, in, in the, and again, there's no way you, you can de uh, decipher that, but he, he is goes, the P, he, by he the is way. the P. He is the P. He's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> <laughs> he says, why don't we, we put, we need to look into this. So I don't care if you closed it, investigate, look into this and put, what is this? Is it the right people? Yes. The, the right, right people. people. On it. What does that mean? Put the right people. You've already had the, the head of the investigation who has closed it. Is he not the right person? Mm -hmm. Is a never Trumper the right person? Mm. That's the insinuation. Yeah, and what this brings up, like a reasonable person would read that and be like, wow, this is a really a setup at the highest levels. And so now these people involved need to be called to explain this thing. Otherwise, we have to go with the reasonable assumption, right? So Joe Biden needs to be asked about this and needs to answer for it. President Obama at some point would need to explain it. Otherwise, we'd have to look at this and say they looked at it, the FBI closed it and moved on. They said, okay, we've got to handle this ourselves and put our people on the situation. You mentioned Joe Biden. Joe Biden has said in the past in an interview that he had nothing to do with the investigation. But in these handwritten notes, he is the one at the very top that brought up the Logan Act. Yeah. It says VP, and then it just has in quotes, actually. Is that the only thing that it looks like that's the only thing in, in actual quotes on this page? It says Logan Act. Logan Act. So can you explain, <laughs> explain, 
Explain to the audience, Jason, uh, why that's relevant. Well, for one, this is a, it appears to be a setup directly from not only the person that's running against President Trump right now, um, but also the president, the, the former president of the United States. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that, even though the, the the investigation was saying that they were saying that he's all good, he's legit in quotes here, right. and the F, and not only is the director saying that, but his head investigators are saying you cannot go after him. Instead, they targeted the incoming president. They targeted him. And th that's. I don't understand. There's no other way to read that, but he was targeted. And especially the hilarious mention of the Logan Act, which would has never been used before. It's not even up to date. Like, and, and just for a really quick explainer, the Logan Act was what from the late 1700s, early 1800s, before they had phones, when you could literally just put on a white wig. You know, if you're an American and you're on holiday, you know, and you're in London and you're like, I'm going to go pretend to be the president of the United States, <laughs> you know what I mean? And be like, hey, you know, uh, I think that uh, you should send uh, all of, uh, you know, the, send a thousand gold over to this address because I mandate it from the right. president of the United States. That's what it was for. So it's, it's just not relevant today. So no one's prosecuting it. If it was relevant today, John Kerry would be in prison right now because he's been pursuing the Iran deal with heads of, uh, of Iran. He would be, but they don't go after him on that. They would love to, I'm sure, but they can't get it done. Now you had the vice president of the United States going, hey, what about that Logan Act thing? All of them thought it was ridiculous. But if you pursue it, then they have something to put out in the press. Right. You have the appearance of guilt, which is all they wanted. Yeah. They knew they were never going to land anything, but they wanted the appearance of guilt because they wanted to tarnish the incoming president. Aaron, I'm just shocked that Joe Biden was like actually paying attention enough in the conversation <laughs> to say the Logan well, Act. Well, you don't know. He might have been like asleep and he just was like Logan Act. Yeah. <laughs> and just fell out. While he's sleeping. But the problem with this is that it's such a complicated thing that it's hard to make it an issue that matters to voters. And so even though Trump is going to hammer it and he's going to tweet about it, I want I wonder how much this is going to really grab the attention of the people who are going to decide whether or not Joe Biden, who is involved in this, is going to be president. And so there has to be some kind of effort and some kind of way to make the importance of this understandable to the people who are going to be voting in November. That is a really good point because, you know, here at Blaze TV, we have uh, Glenn Beck, who does these huge chalkboards that really get you to understand and take one fact after the other and put it all together. This guy, by the way, helps design all those. So, you know, this is this is the guy. Um, Nerd. He, yeah. So here we have that. The average person, though, who's not watching those chalkboard shows, they don't have the attention span long enough, I think, necessary to really dive into these details and put all of these things together. As you saw evidence by the fact that, you know, when we start, when we saw this first document dump and we said, look, this is Obamagate, and everyone said, please, that's a conspiracy theory. There's no Obamagate. Yeah, and, and that's a perfect example of, you know, the chalkboard, because if you just take a random thing, that's, that chalkboard's not over there anymore, but if you just took a little sliver and you were like, what the heck is this? It looks insane. It doesn't make sense until you explain it everything as a whole. Right. Now, what we're getting right now, and why I think it's still kind of confusing, is we're getting slivers of a chalkboard. Yeah. We're, we know that Michael Flynn was, was targeted. A judge just said that he was targeted, not word for word, but pretty much. Yeah. Um, th there's not much context around that. Now, I've been looking at the whole case as a whole, um, which I think we're going to do a show on pretty soon, next few weeks. Um, but we're going to add more to the chalkboard on that. Like General Flynn, what happened with General Flynn, it's so much more involved. Mm -hmm. It has so much more to do with just that. Um, for instance, and this is a little tease, but um, when the call log came out, or the, the log came out of how many people requested to unmask Flynn's name, it was insane. There were so many people on there. Some of them made sense. Like some of them like, you know, Pentagon people, some national security people, some of those made sense. But then all of a sudden you get people like, why is the consulate in Italy requesting to unmask General Flynn's name. Mm. What in the holy hell possible reason would they, like they're over there probably eating spaghetti in Italy. <laughs> and they're hers. That's what they do, right? That's what they do, right? <laughs> and, they, and they use big hand gestures. Like, hey, what, what's up with this, you know, with Flynn? And it, no. It's going downhill quick. But yeah, it's going downhill. <laughs> there is no reason for them. And yeah. the more I looked into it, I was like, okay, now that makes sense. Huh. And then this name connected to that, like, you know, a, you know, a Joseph Masood. Possibly. That's another name mm. to look up. All of these names are connected, and it's all a part of a big thing. I think John Brennan's going to go down the Durham uh, investigation. I think these people in Italy are going to go down. I think a ton of people are going to go down. 
what happens to them, we'll find out. But at least the information will finally be out there. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, just because the mainstream media has little pea brains and can't tie all of these things together does not necessarily mean it is a conspiracy theory, okay? Uh, by the way, last point on this, Aaron, I will say, to your point about, you know, hey, if you really care about police corruption, here it is. Let's look into it. Can we all be united on this one thing and making sure that we at least get to the bottom of it? I saw so many people today uh, just glossing over all of these facts that we've talked about and instead saying, well, Michael Flynn lied because he I mean, he, he admitted guilt. So he lied to the FBI. He lied under oath. Oh, what now? Because if you're related to Trump somehow, you get off scot-free. So now we're not prosecuting people who are lying under oath. And I'm like, Do, are you really? How many people know what the lie is when they say that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I bet most people don't even know the details of what it is. And if they no. did, they'd be like, wow, that's not what I thought it was at well, all. Well, because I'm, I'm like, if you're really concerned about police corruption and you're really concerned about stuff like that, wouldn't you then go gosh, I wonder how many average Americans get caught mm -hmm. up in something like this and admit guilt when they haven't actually done anything wrong and, and no are wrongly incarcerated. And resources or power to be able to get out of exactly. that situation. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. It's really sad. All right, we've got more to come, including, oh, this is my favorite story today, Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace is all over the place with uh, the FBI's recent investigation. It was kind of a case closed type thing into the noose hanging from his garage at NASCAR. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Freedom Project Academy. So uh, apparently, because of all this pandemic stuff and uh, parents having to stay at home and basically homeschool their children, uh, there are now over 40% of American families who are considering homeschooling again this fall. Uh, if you are thinking to yourself, I can't do that because my kids drove me crazy. This was a horrible experience. I There's absolutely no way I'm going to homeschool. Well, I have the homeschooling answer for you, and that is Freedom Project Academy, okay? So according to the Nation's Report Card, reading and math proficiency has declined steadily over the last 10 years. Freedom Project Academy is here to help your children get back on track. They've got live, interactive, online educational experiences with students from across the country. Uh, your kids can do it from the convenience and safety of your own home, and they will receive an accredited classical online education built on Judeo-Christian values. This is for K through 12. So wherever they're, they're at, wherever the stage is that they're at, they can attend Freedom Project Academy, who also teaches your children how to think, not what to think. So they are the complete opposite of all of the liberal school districts where your kids are going to get indoctrinated. You don't want that, all right? But you also don't want to just keep your kids at home and be responsible for teaching them yourselves. This is where Freedom Project Academy comes in clutch. You gotta go to freedomforschool.com. That is freedomforschool.com. You can request a free information packet. Open enrollment is ending really soon, so you gotta go very quickly. Uh, Freedom for School. Dot com. We will be back in just a minute. Uh, the FBI has released its conclusion after an investigation that no hate crime was committed in the NASCAR garage for uh, Bubba Wallace. Now, what had happened, if you guys missed this, because I honestly, I didn't cover this on this show until this point because I knew that there was something weird with this story. And I was like, I'm not gonna give this story the light of day yet. I wanna see how it plays out. So Bubba Wallace, NASCAR driver, he is, he's half black, right? That I don't know. I think he's half black, but he, but regardless, Obama's the first black president. So he is a black NASCAR driver. And um, he, I guess his team, the NASCAR team that was with him, indicated to him that there was a noose hanging from the garage where his car was. It became this big, full-blown story. Um, NASCAR, you know, of course, immediately latched onto it that they couldn't believe that someone would do that. They had 15 FBI agents investigating this freaking case that immediately, I'm sure you guys heard and you were like, I don't feel like there's a way that someone could just like pass through all of the security and hang a noose for Bubba Wallace. At least let's take a pause and like think about it before we issue right. the statements and do the march. Right, exactly. Well, 15, 15 FBI agents were on the case and uh, very quickly discovered that th it was not, it was, it was just, it had been there for several years and it was just a garage door pull.
It was just a <laughs> oops. A, a homemade garage door pull is just a rope us with a little hand mistake, pull. Though, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> who, who among us except like all of us. So, uh Bubba Wallace not one to be told that he did not experience some sort of racial oppression, went on Don Lemon last night, and uh, he responded to the FBI investigation. Again, I just want to remind you, 15 agents. Here's what Bubba Wallace had to say. I'm, uh, I'm pissed. I'm, I'm, I'm mad because people are trying to test my character and the person that I am and my integrity and... They're not stealing that away from me, but they're just trying to test that. I've been racing all my life. I've, we, we've raced out of hundreds of garages that uh, never had garage pools like that. So people that want to call it a garage pool and put out old videos and photos of, of, of knots being um, in, uh, in, in, in their, as their evidence, go ahead. But from the evidence that we have, um, and that I have, uh, it's a straight up noose. The FBI has stated it was a noose over and over again. NASCAR leadership has stated that it was a noose. I can confirm that. I actually got evidence of what was hanging in my garage, over my car, around my picker guys, to confirm that it was a noose. And never seen anything like it. I mean, that's weird. Because like I just said, 15 FBI agents concluded it was not a noose. So I missed the part he said they told us over and over the FBI did that it wasn't. I, I didn't hear them say that. They didn't. He they said didn't. that very confidently. So it made me double take like, <laughs> did I miss? So they said it was not a noose? Yeah, they said it was a garage door pull. It was like a, it was, it was a rope that they attached to so that you could, you know, just like in your regular garage, if you need like an emergency garage door pulley because it, your garage door opener becomes disconnected somehow, you got to have something to pull is the same type of deal. It had well, apparently been there since like 2019. They had yes, no way of knowing of that he would be using that garage. That's, you know. the, that's the most damning to this thing. Even if it was a noose, th there's no direct connotation, you know, if there's just a noose, you know what I mean? I mean, it's. I mean, there used to be commercials, you know, like get a rope, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, connotating Old West type stuff. But if obviously if they had no, if, if those garages are random, it happened over a year ago, you know, I, I could totally see someone who's like, hey, let's make that a noose. And it would not be, it would, there'd be nothing racist about that. Yeah, but I mean, obviously his assertion was that <laughs> it was placed there specifically for him it must have been that's the only reasonable conclusion to jump to because he's black so I, and America I, is racist. I could see him doing an initial jump to that conclusion. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. just initially be like, what the heck? You know what yeah. I mean? And seeing that. But I can't understand after you've, you've seen that, hey, dude, this was over a year ago. Right. Here's a picture of a white guy coming out of the garage, the same garage and the same noose behind him because it's not a noose. I don't understand why you'd have this interview then. Yeah, this is, it's really disappointing because he was, you know, he was doing some good things in terms of representing for his cause and he was doing it in the right way. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was supportive of him and I thought, well, he seems like a guy with some good character. And when the FBI investigation came out and said, this is not a noose, I expected him to then come out and be like, sorry Thank guys, God. That's an arm. I'm so not, happy that right? it's not a racist crime yes. against me. Instead, he goes on Don Lemon of all shows, and you know what kind of tone you're going to get from that, and talks about how angry he is that people are agreeing with the FBI's investigation. And I don't really know what he wanted to accomplish with that fight. I don't think people were trying to personally attack him for it. It's just the facts of the situation. It wasn't a noose. Mm -hmm. And I think... I understand why he would jump to that conclusion. He had just done the Confederate flag thing to where NASCAR banned it. There were people protesting at the track. And so I can see why he would suddenly like be in that mindset to be like, yeah. oh, no, somebody is furthering their protest by sure. doing this to me. Right. But after you're after you're wrong, don't double down. You know, it just makes you look bad. And now it, it, this is going to stick to his character in a way and his reputation in a way that's just not helpful to anything that he wants to accomplish. He wasn't the only one. I saw uh, Al Sharpton. Oh, did, did this doing the same thing? Yeah, of course. And we but, actually we have a we have the clip oh. of Al Sharpton uh, on MSNBC this morning again. So FBI releases their investigation results last night, yesterday. After that, Bubba Wallace goes on Don Lemon. You heard what he had to say there, and then this morning, Al Sharpton says this. We should take it as good news that someone didn't place it into his stall specifically as the only full-time black driver in NASCAR who pushed to have those Confederate flags removed from NASCAR events, and NASCAR did take that step last week. But it does appear there was a noose, as the FBI is calling it, placed in that garage last fall. 
The FBI identified it as a noose. NASCAR uh, said it was a noose or went along with the FBI's characterization. It was a noose. So the question is, even if they did not know that Bubba Wallace was going to use that stall, why was a noose in the stall? It's <laughs> clear what a noose represents. No. And I think to, to go whether or not they knew that sooner or later the one black driver would use that stall really doesn't answer why it was in the stall at all. And then did someone know that it was in the stall when they did belatedly oh. assign Bubba there? So I don't think this answers a lot of questions. And clearly from what we just saw of Bubba Wallace, it does not seem he, who is the victim and possible target in this matter, <laughs> seems to be satisfied with this. So I do not think that we've seen closure in this particular uh, inquiry. This oh is, my this God! Is, it's frustrating for me because I do care about racial issues. I care about me racial too. justice. It, it, it's important to me, and there are important things happening with policing and things happening in these different communities. And we're arguing here about whether the garage pull was like a racist hate. Even if it was, let's say it was, it doesn't actually matter that much to where we need to be arguing about it. So let let Bubba Wallace or Al Sharpton think that that's what it was. Let's let's move on. But I'm because not okay. More... But, but you know what? I'm not okay with that. You know why? Because it's completely devoid of facts. But the people, he can believe his wrong facts. But we still don't need to be talking about. You know what I mean? Like Al Sharpton. I agree. Is, but don't put does Al, Al Sharpton, Sharpton on not TV. have better things. Exactly. Don't but, put Al Sharpton on TV to say it was. It, well, it was clearly a noose. Well, why did someone hang a noose knowing that eventually someday a black man would what, be walking into the, this garage? The like, amount of what? gymnastics that he did to get to that point. Like, well, they knew at some point. Like, there was no n black drivers in NASCAR for X number. <laughs> years and they thought well one day one of those guys is going to come around and one day guys we're really going to get him with our racism that is an elaborate hate crime I playing the laws of average one day he might go through this garage you know not only don't put al sharpton on 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 tv to say to comment on this don't put him on tv at all yeah especially not on these cases he's already been caught inciting racial you know problems based off of false pretexts yep. pretenses yep He's already been caught, and people lost their lives because of it. If he was really somebody who cared about these kind of issues, he wouldn't be spending his time worried about that. With everything else we got going around, he wouldn't be doing long interviews trying to trace together why that noose was specifically targeted to Bubba Wallace. Well, it doesn't we, make but, any sense. Because you know why? At the end of the day, you really can tell their true intentions by how they react. And I don't just mean Al Sharpton. I mean Al Sharpton, Bubba Wallace, Jamel Hill, everyone else who was actually literally upset at the FBI's conclusion that there was no hate crime involved. It really shows you their true intentions right. on whether or not they want racism to exist in America. You're supposed to not want it to be the hate crime. That's, right. that's actually if the good want, conclusion. They don't want to yeah. solve racism. They yeah. want to continue racism, and that's the real problem. Uh, I will say very quickly before we, uh, we go to break, Bubba Wallace did apparently get a hold of his PR people after after the Don Lemon uh, segment. Today, finally, he issued a follow-up statement. He said, it's been an emotional few days. Uh, he wants to say how relieved he is that the investigation revealed that this wasn't what we feared it was. That's weird, because he just went on Where Don Lemon. Where was that relief? Yeah. yeah, he just went on Don Lemon the night before and doubled down on his assertion that it was a straight up noose. Now, all of a sudden, he's relieved. Uh, and he said, I think we'll gladly take a little embarrassment over what the alternatives could have been. Make no mistake, though some will try, this should not detract from the show of unity we had on Monday and the progress we've been, we've made as a sport to be a more welcoming environment for all. It would have so. been a little embarrassment if he had not done the Don Lemon interview. Now it's a lot of embarrassment. <laughs> well, and I mean, yeah. he did go on television earlier this week and call people who thought, who doubted the story, he called them simple-minded. So kind of set yourself hard, up there. For yeah, failure. it's hard to walk back from that Bubba Wallace, but good try anyway. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back in a minute. That's my thing. It's just like uh, I was willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. A county in Oregon uh, has issued a directive for everyone to wear face masks in their county, except there's a big exception to this. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, uh, there's like a health condition exception, right? Some sort of exception for people who medically they can't wear the masks. Well, no, the directive actually orders, quote, all individuals 
end quote, in the county to wear masks at all indoor public settings and any outdoor public settings where they can't keep at least six feet from other people, not from their household, uh, with exceptions for children, people with health conditions or disabilities, and, oh, also people of color who have heightened concerns about racial profiling and harassment due to wearing face coverings in public. What's the problem? <laughs> I'm, I'm invoking that clause. I mean, yeah, sure. So apparently, uh, according to CNN, many black leaders and ordinary citizens, I like how they threw that in there, Just many ordinary. black leaders and also ordinary citizens. The regular blacks. <laughs> are concerned about possible racial profiling when it comes to masks. So now, Jason, as a member of the white patriarchy, if you live in Lincoln County in Oregon, you are mandated to wear a mask in all of these, all their, where they said, indoor public settings, outdoor public settings where you're not going to be six feet. Aaron, not so much. <laughs> Again, I don't really know why we're upset about this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Aaron... You, okay, so you're a reporter for theblaze.com. Mm -hmm. Have you found any scientific evidence that shows that the coronavirus is less likely to, like, infect you if you are woke and a minority? Well, we're still <laughs> studying that, so I, didn't, I think there's no conclusive <laughs> findings on it yet. I don't want to really jump out ahead of that. No, this is kind of a, it's kind of a ridiculous policy. I mean, because when you think about the idea of a mask and racial profiling, like, if I walk into a place with a ski mask, I might feel like, okay, my whole face is covered, look like maybe I'm about to rob the place. That's, that might cause some racial profiling or something. Uh, like a coronavirus mask, a medical mask, I don't think anybody looks at that and is like, uh-oh, here's a threat coming into the situation. It's a pandemic, everybody's wearing masks. So I don't really know that this is like a big problem to where they have to say, okay, people of color, you can not wear the mask. Again, I thought the, the thing was to stop the spread. If that was the most important thing, then maybe that would overcome. Maybe we should just not racial profile and then wear the masks. It's either versus like not wearing the mask, even though there's a disease going around that they're telling us supposedly will kill so everyone. It's We're, either important enough right. that we all wear a mask or it's not. So the, the racial profiling thing, I, I don't get that. They, they think that they think that like people, black people wearing masks would be more likely to be like identified by the owner of a store as maybe a, a criminal or about right. to rob the store or right. something like that. Which is, which that's is the kind idea of, that goes pretty racist to, to well, assume I, that. I anyway, know. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if I'm, if I'm wearing like, just like a, a white mask covering this. Is somebody, why would I wear that to rob a store? I would wear, if I wanted to cover my identity, I would wear it. I don't know. I don't rob stores, so. <laughs> Well, I, are you sure? <laughs> well, let's not talk about it on the air. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, we're talking about all of this, the, the issue of whether or not there is systemic racism in America, whether or not, you know, racism is a big problem in America that needs to be addressed. And it's just like, all I see in the news are a bunch of people who just, they, like, they just want it to exist. Yeah, they're dying for it to exist. If if you take that away from them, if you take away the idea that racism is not rampant in America and it is in fact a rare and individual case basis, they would have nothing left. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. You know, the the bad thing I've said this before, I think a while back, but the sad thing about this is like like our generation, like our kids, your kids, my kids, they're at this point where like my kids up until I think they're in junior high school. Literally had no idea there was a difference in race mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I, I have I, I come with a uh, interracial uh, uh, relationship. My wife's Mexican. Um, they have no clue that there's a difference in because there's not. Yep. <laughs> That's the, the bar none yeah. as far as mental capacity, anything at all. They they, they, re, they understand like difference in culture, but that's it. Everything else is just judged by what you think and what you feel. That, that's actually that's it. They didn't start realizing that or seeing this, and it become an issue to them when they got into junior high school. And they started talking to some of these like teachers that were a little woke, and then they started watching CNN and all that stuff. Then it became an issue. They're like, right. "Oh my gosh, right. there, there's a difference." Like, no, there's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're forcing this on our kids in a weird way. This kind of like reinforces this like black people wearing masks is a bad thing. Like it reinforces in your mind that idea that people of color are like more criminal than right. white people. Right, that's what I'm people. saying. Like, it's yeah. actually so, racist to assume that people would have a problem with black people wearing masks. And I assume there are some, you probably find some individuals who would think that way, but again, I don't think you want to make a policy based off these potentially isolated incidents that might occur. You don't want to make a policy based off that because again, it just reinforces these these differences and these divisions. Yeah, and, and the bad thing is that, the, like the geo, so the left has gone all in on this. Yeah. GOP's not helping their case here. 
Especially with, okay, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but this irks me to no end that the president's writing executive orders as a GOP president to say, okay, we need to, at the, at, at the federal level, do something about all these racist cops, which is not how he worried, word, worded right. it, but you might as well just say it that way. And then the Senate's doing the same thing. Like, which, oh, by the oh. way, which, by the way, that uh, the police reform bill failed on a test vote in the Senate. Oh, today? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it was, it was bound to. Yeah. They were never going to get enough yeah. Democrats to come over. No way. And the in Congress, they try to do it on, on their end. They're not going to get anything. Well, the thing done with either. Trump doing is that he's not going to get credit for doing it from the people that he's pandering to. Right. And so you might as well just be who you are on this issue. You don't have to do an executive order to try. The Democrats are not going to suddenly be like, "Wow, he gets it now," and then give him credit. He's yeah. still going to. Well, just be- like I mean, he and I think this is something he truly does believe in the criminal justice reform. He. He did that, and he didn't get any credit for it. Mm-hmm. He didn't get any credit for it, except from all of the the black people that he actually freed, who were in prison uh, for ridiculous sentences. They give him credit for it. No one else does. Right. So I don't know why he would think that. Yeah, and then you know he he didn't he didn't credit, but then what he did was he he let himself be outmaneuvered by the left, yes. which they do on everything. Yes. Yes. They let themselves so, look. The progressives and the left want more federal control over police departments. You're giving them that. You're getting more federal uh, control into it by regulating them. This is a local issue. Police departments are a local issue. Let them deal with it within their communities. Mm. That's the only that's the only conservative way to look at this. Yeah. All right. We've got more to come back in a minute. Uh, I don't know if you guys realize this. There's only four and a half months to go until the November election, which is terrifying. But uh, the polling right now, the poll indicates that uh, Joe Biden leads President Trump 50 to 36 percent among registered voters nationwide. Now, uh, this was a national poll conducted by Siena College, and uh, it is the latest national poll to show Joe Biden uh, topping President Trump by double digits. There was a poll that was released last week that showed uh, Biden ahead of Trump by 12 percentage points. CNN had one that showed him ahead by 14 percentage points. There are a couple other surveys that indicate a single digit advantage for Joe Biden. Uh, Of course, the president's campaign says um, that the New York Times poll that was one of the polls released was based off of registered voters, not likely voters. Um, And numbers have continuously shown President Trump running extremely strong against a defined Joe Biden instead of a just the Democratic candidate. Obviously, it's weird because it's like, well, there's a lot of time to go. But then it's like, well, there's not that much time. It's only four and a half months. But there's so much that's happened since January. I just feel like there's a lot of things to, to take place, a lot of things to shake out. Should President Trump be worried at this point in time, Jason? Should he be worried? Yes, I think he should be worried about it. I, well, I think he should be concerned about it mm-hmm. for sure. Um, look, there's a lot of things going on right now that don't cast a great that have been even if they're not all fully on his shoulders that, that they're not casting a good light on him. So he's going to poll negatively. For one, I don't trust polls again at all ever since the last election because they just fail. I mean, Hillary by this time in the last election, Hillary has probably had a 90 percent probability chance of winning. And I, I agree I mean, with you. Like, it, in my head, I'm like, okay, well, they were wrong last time. They can be wrong again. But it's still, it's very, it's very scary to see when you see these double-digit leads and you're like, but, but the guy, but the other guy can't even talk. Sure. Well, okay, so that, that was to my next point is, yes, there is a lot more time. And there's a lot of things that I think the GOP has been holding close to themselves that they're going to start really publicizing later, like the fact that Joe Biden voted for the protection of segregated schools. Things like that don't fit the narrative right now. And people right. are not talking about that. That's going to come out more, especially in a debate. When we get to the debates, Joe's going to look like a fool, a straight fool. Actually, they're going to have to restrain Trump so he doesn't look like too much of a bully on an old man. They really yeah, are. They will. Like, I, they, they'll, they'll, that's going to be hard. They'll call it elder abuse. They will. <laughs> Actually, it'll be hard to say, look, you're gonna, if you push too hard, you're going to look bad. Right. Kind of like, like the Al Gore thing where they wanted Al Gore to stand up to the Texan. But when he like walked to the middle of the stage and stared him down and Bush was like, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah. And then Gore looked like an idiot. Yeah. But there, so Trump's going to have to restrain himself not to be the Al Gore in some of these debates. Um, but that stuff will come out. A lot more stuff on Joe Biden's character and the fact that he's pretty much a vegetable right now. And uh, he's going to poll a lot because, as they said, they're keeping him in his basement. Right. There's a reason why they're not taking the cameras in every single day because he's going to screw it up. 
Yeah. A lot of time for that to happen. I think it's a matter of trajectory. Like from where Trump is right now and with the numbers, is he moving in the right direction towards getting more support, toward energizing his base, toward making sure that people turn out? Because I think there's some evidence that he's, you know, even in places like Texas where Biden is running closer than he should. And you, you just want to be careful that your trajectory is going in the right direction. We've had the coronavirus. We've had these racial issues that are hurting them in the polls. Now, what is the plan to move forward to make sure that you're gaining momentum as you go towards November? Because it's kind of the thing where Joe Biden is Joe Biden and the people who are going to vote for him are, you know, they're going to vote for him. He's not really going to energize people. But I don't think Trump can just coast to the win. I think yeah. Biden has a solid enough base of people who just hate Trump that Trump has to do something affirmative, positive, to energize people to get them out to make sure that these polls turn out to be wrong, because they could turn out to be right. There's a couple things that worry me also. Uh, like, the, they're not, the Democrats are not going to make the mistakes of the last uh, election. Um, they're not going to abandon Wisconsin and be so arrogant to think that they can hold it. Are you sure? I'm, I, oh, I'm positive. They're not going to pull that again. Well, they're, they're pulling a lot of the social justice warrior stuff that really, I think, threw a lot of people towards President Trump in 2016. Oh, sure. They're pulling all of that again. So I, I always doesn't wonder what the Democrats Doesn't that energize their base, though? Isn't that sort of a turnout thing to where you kind of get people to think, like, if you don't vote for base, me... But, like, but not yeah. so much the independents. Right. It's not going to yeah. convert people. Yeah. Well, what's weird is that's just the second thing that worries me is some of those independents, some of those, like, moderates that really could go either way. Um, I think that a lot of them are to the point to where they either really love Trump or they really hate him. Just like with the Hillary Clinton. Like, they were like, look, I cannot vote for her. Right. So even if I don't like it, a lot of Republicans were the same way. Yeah. Like, I don't like Trump, but I hate her. So I'm just going to vote for Trump. I think that, that there might be a weird flip of that in this election. And that's at least something to keep an eye on. Well, I hope so, because I just, again, I know uh, in my head, I'm like, okay, the polls, they, the polls all said Hillary Clinton was going to win. We all thought Hillary Clinton was going to win uh, up until election night. Obviously, those were wrong. But just the, the, the mere thought that Joe Biden, who is basically halfway in the grave— could be elected. I think the Joe Biden really could win, and I think that Republicans and Trump really have to take that seriously. I don't think, as sleepy and yeah. senile as he might look, he can win. And I think that the the perspective has to be: we have to win this, not just we have to watch him lose it. The the, right. the crazy thing That's is, is they're they're doubling down, like you said, on the social justice stuff. Mm -hmm. If he if they if if his campaign manager said just dump that. Yeah. Concentrate on blue collar workers. Mm -hmm. He might walk through the election, but they won't do it. Instead, so. they're talking about defunding the police. All right. It's going to play well with independence. All right, we got to take a break. Back in a minute. <laughs> All right, yesterday's poll Are you satisfied with how President Trump has responded to statues being torn down across the country? 52% of you said no, you are not satisfied with how President Trump has responded. Uh, almost 48% of you have said yes. Interesting results because the two wow. gentlemen who were at the table both said that they were fine with how President Trump, they were satisfied with how. President Trump has responded. I would be very interested to know whether or not you people, you lovely people who responded with no, do you think he was too, was he too weak? Was he, I mean, I don't know. It's not what, his job to Right, what is he supposed to from, do? That's police's job, right? I don't know. City's job. It's a local problem. Right? It's a local problem. I feel yes. like is is the re repeated mantra of Jason today. Absolutely. And because this is when bad things happen, when the government steps in too far. So you need to let them do their job. I, I agree with how he's done it because he's been basically standoffish. Yeah. He's been, re, you know, he's been reluctant mm -hmm. to go in and say the federal, now the federal government's getting involved, right. which is exactly how it's hey, We don't want him to send in the troops to like. Do with the yeah, so I, I'd be curious to know. But really quickly before we have to go, today's poll, is NASCAR's Bubba Wallace the next Jesse Smollett? Oh or was this all just a misunderstanding? Mm. Let us know what you think. You can go to the Blaze's Twitter that is at the Blaze. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you. Having the patriarchy explain it to me is always <laughs> a pleasure. We'll see you tomorrow.